Guys, Mark Goldberg here from Mark Vlogs Watches with a quick word for your friend and mine, Archie Luxury, Paul Pluta, AC3, Archibald Chesterfield III. You know, he invented the quick whist watch check, and uh, the rest of us on YouTube, well, we just stole it. Help keep Archie full-time on YouTube by liking this video, watching this video, tell your fuckhead friends, and make sure to subscribe to his Patreon. And now, Archie Luxury. Hi guys, I am Paul Pluto. We're on the Paul Pluto channel today. We're doing a paid review for Julian. And this is paid review 9OC10. 9OC10. And before we do this paid review, <coughs> let's do a quick wristwatch check because I invented the wristwatch check. I'm wearing a Jaeger Look Ultra Reverso Grande Date. This is my sports steel stunner. Sports Steel Stunner. Okay, let's jump straight in. We're doing a paid review. Dear Pontiff, greetings from New York. Could you please review the newly released, newly released, okay, Chopard Alpine Eagle and compare it to the Girard Perigay Lodietto 42mm blue or black dial on the steel bracelet. So let's have a talk about the first one, the Chopard Alpine. Now, let's have a talk about this. Firstly, let me just make a bit of a statement. I want to make a statement about these two brands, Chopard and Gerard Perigay. I'm going to say this statement, so please, if you're doing something else, sit down and fucking listen. Let me say this. Julian... You would have to be a fucking, fucking, fucking moron to buy either brand. They are toxic sewer sludge. Let me just re-say that again in case you thought I said something positive. Stay the fuck away from that Swiss garbage. Okay, now let's have a talk here about Chopard Alpine Eagle. Now, first thing with Chopard is, that's a great watch for the bitches. Chopard makes, they're a high-end Swiss watch and jewelry manufacturer. They have the happy diamonds. They're very cool. If you've got a vagina, if you have a vagina, Chopard is cool. If you are, if you've got the, the the plus instead of the minus, let's have a talk about this, because I got to be completely frank and honest with you. This watch here, what is it? What is it? Well, what's happened is Chopard. Chopard has been soft as shit for many many years, and they've said, right, what's hot? What's hot? What's hot on the market? Well, what's hot is the the Royal Oak. The Patek, Nautilus, and the Aquanaut. So they've gone and said, well, we've got to make something that looks fucking similar. So that's exactly what they have done. Um, now, i got to tell you, this, 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 this range of watches goes back to the 1980s. Um, where they had a collection of watches with the design and ethos of the early 80s. I gotta be honest with you, <clears throat> it's it's very, very, as, as uh, there's a great article on Houdinki, Houdinki talks about this, and Houdinki's always very so nice, he, he can't tell the truth, like, he, he, he can, you know, he tells the truth, but he's gotta sugarcoat it, whereas I can just be brutal, and get straight to the point. Um, now I got to say this to you. It's uh, I got to be completely frank and honest with you. It's 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 how do I say this? This watch here is just a basically they've looked at what's popular, and they've fucking milked it for every fucking cent they can get there. Okay. Uh, the sports watch, Chopard, it must, it might be useful to remember the St. Moritz. Yes, this was the 80s sports watch. Uh, 
and Chopin's Karl Freigerich Schnifil released in 1980. It was a 22-year-old newcomer. Uh, St. Moritz. That's a, that was a good brand of cigarettes. I used, they were cool. So, they've gone back to the St. Moritz and they've, they've kind of uh, Royal Oaked it, Nautilus'd it a bit. Okay? Um, and i got to be honest with you. Yes, yes, it's true. The, the, these, this is what Chopin did have. It, it, it's a... Um, the thing is, is that basically... Steel sports. That's what everyone wants. Steel sports, steel sports. And, you know, i got to be quite frank with you. Um, it's... They, they, they've, they've done a few interesting things. One of them is, is, is the Eagle. The Alpine Eagle is the introduction of a new proprietary alloy of steel, stainless steel, called Lucent Steel A223. Okay, which is composed uh, of recycled, partially of recycled stainless steel. Okay, thank you. Um, it's 50% more resistant to abrasion than conventional steel. Okay, all of the case, the bracelet components, whether steel or gold, are made in-house by Chopard. Thank you. It's 100 meters water resistant. Uh, okie dokie. Now, <clears throat> i got to be honest with you. 41 mil in size is a modern size. Very clever. Very, very clever. Um, and they've got a few, few. They've also got 18 carat ethical rose gold. Fuck, I hate this PC shit. Fuck me dead. So, prices are starting at, this is US dollars. 12,900 for the 41 mil steel and 19,700 for the two tone. Uh, they've also got a 36 mil version which starts at 10,100. Uh, they've also got diamond accent versions, yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> and for all the gold, which is um, 45,000. $200 with varying amounts of diamonds. Okie dokie. So, so I got to be completely frank with you. Is it a nice looking watch? Look, it, it's, it's, it's semi-decent. It is semi-decent. The appearance is semi-decent, but I wouldn't fucking buy one. I wouldn't fucking buy one. <clears throat> if you want something like that, I would buy the IWC Inji. IWC Ingenua. 3227, that's the one I had. You know, the Gerald? Genta Design! The Genta Designed one. That's the one I had. I had that one. And I gotta tell you, this Chopard, Chopard's not for men. You gotta have a vagina to buy Chopard. It's not a man's brand. Okay, now the next thing we're comparing this fucking thing to is Gerard Perrigay. Now, I've got to be completely frank. Gerard Perrigay is a brand I have hated for fucking years. I, I, um, I fucking hate Gerard Perrigay. And there was, a, there was an excellent documentary. I'll put a link called Time Machines. And <clears throat> they went around interviewing some famous people in the watch industry and they actually interviewed this, the, the head guy in London Gerard Perrigay and he just really fucking annoyed me I'll put the link, Time Machines uh, it was an excellent documentary, I I remember I, I've watched it about a hundred times it's it's fantastic documentary it's got Tom Bolt in it who's a famous UK watch uh, celebrity now um, it's it's kind of, uh, how do I put it? It's, it's okay. So let's have a look though. Gerard Perrigay, a at 42 mils. So this is a watch here that I really, 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 from starters, it's also, they've copied the Royal Oak and the, 
The Nautilus. That's where they've seen the money. They want the money. Show me the money. This is just so fucking blatant. It's just ridiculous, okay? Oh, my God, okay. Um, so, it's Gerard Perrigan. And I admit, I've seen this in the flesh. I've seen it in um, in Singapore. I saw it in Singapore. Um, now, i got to be honest with you. They're, um, they are fucking out of their mind there. Um, they had a limited edition version, which they were asking 15,000 US fucking, just fucking lunacy. Absolute lunacy. The uh, the laureate there, they they basically they've introduced some interesting. They have the laureate, laureate. They had a tourbillon, uh, but <clears throat> let's have a look at the forty-two mil. And I must admit, this is actually an attractive watch. If it wasn't such a fucking blatant design copy of the fucking Royal Oak and the Nautilus, and it's. I gotta be honest with you, it's just fucking uninspiring. It's they 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 had a they've done a few things here, they've really tweaked it. <clears throat> There's a great Houdinki article on on this watch here. Uh they 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 had a uh they, they got a new the new one is the 42. They had a 41. Last year's model was a 41, so they, they fucked up the sizing. And they've dropped the price from fourteen thousand three hundred to eleven thousand, uh, and th it's providing a healthy dose of. This is from the Houdinki article. Uh, <clears throat> they're comparing it to a Piaget Polo S, which I fucking can't stand, and the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak fifteen four hundred. Well, that's now the fifteen five hundred. In terms of pricing, um, and I've got to be completely completely uh honest with you it is absolute fucking lunacy absolutely lunacy gerard perigay is always been a soft toxic dog shit brand absolutely toxic if you want one of these general gentra inspired fucking things go and do yourself a favor get yourself an iwc ingenuer okay get yourself one of those you can buy those second hand four thousand dollars us okay i had the three two two seven which used the in-house movement that is the pick of the cream the cream the, it was 42 and a half mils it was big it was chunky it was Everything this Gerard Perrigay will never fucking be. And I, I've got to be honest with you. Yes, I, I the look of it, it looks nice. It's kind of a cross between... It kind of looks... The bracelet reminds me of Basher and Constantine. Um, I can see IWC with the with the Gillichay type pattern. Probably not real Gillichay knowing Gerard Perrigay. Um, it's... Quite all they did is they left the screws off out of the bezel, um, and and and, I, and I've got to be completely honest with you. Um, fucking toxic, Gerard Perrigay is toxic. You want to buy one like a Gerald Gentry inspired watch? Go for the IWC Ingenua. They're fucking on the second hand market. You can't give that shit away, and I sold it to. Luxuria watches. Cove Luxuria Sydney it used to be Sydney Watch Exchange. And he said to me, you know, Arch, if you were selling it again, I wouldn't fucking take it. It's and that was the IWC, which was a bargain, absolute fucking bargain. It'd been serviced by IWC box papers. It was bloody nice. And it belonged to the pontiff. Uh, so I gotta be honest with you. <clears throat> you want me to compare the two? Which one would I prefer out of the two? A fucking Chopard or the Gerard Perrigay? Fuck, that's a hard one. They're both toxic sludge. I'd I'd have to say they're both fucking toxic sludge. I'd probably I'd probably go Chopard. It's probably 
Even though you need to have a vagina to have a show part, I'd say it's slightly more prestigious than Gerard Perrigay, which is... I hate that brand. I really fucking hate that brand. So, there you go. My best advice, avoid like the plague. You've got to have fucking rocks in your fucking nogger to buy that shit. Absolute fucking stupidity. Fucking fucking stupidity that's all i can say there um i i don't know why you'd look at that shit rolex and paddock that's it man rolex paddock the royal oak from Audemars Piguet. that's about it okay this other shit fuck fucking toxic sewage fucking toxic sewage so guys, remember, like, subscribe, tell your fuckhead friends, put some nasty comments below. And guys, remember, I can't survive on Google Ads. I need the income from paid reviews. Paid reviews keep me full time on YouTube. So, please guys, get a few videos done. If you haven't had a paid review, you haven't done a collection review let me know i'll do it for you 50 us dollars and i'll tell you what i think i'll be honest and truthful and you can show it to all your friends i'm paul pluto tell me what you fuckeroonies think of that nice one arch great fucking video <laughs>David SW, David SW, David SW, who does Archie Luxury recommend is the greatest grey market dealer in America? There's only one choice, David SW. That's right guys, I've got to tell you the honest truth. I have for a long time been looking for the perfect answer. Who do I recommend people go to see? Who do I recommend that people can go and uh, buy watches and I've got to be honest with you the greatest the greatest pre-owned dealer for Rolex Patek Philippe Audemars Piguet is David SW David SW David SW David SW dot com that's right guys I have been looking for a contact who I can very nicely refer people too. I am not in the selling business. Customer service. I'm too old to sell watches. I'm too old. I like to recommend my viewers to a reliable source. In Australia, I've got some great sources. There's uh, Sydney Watch Exchange with Cove. Rani at Vintage Watch Co. Shani. Shani at European Watch Gallery. And in America, who is the best source for pre-owned Rolex, for all the hot models, there's only one person I would recommend, David SW. David SW, David SW. That is the premier source for pre-owned Rolex. I gotta be completely frank and honest with you. Guys, if you are looking for a hot Rolex model, there is only one place you can go to. David SW, David SW, David SW. Let's be honest, guys. There's no point schmoozing, schmoozing, schmoozing the dealers, the ADs. They're just a waste of time. Unless you're going to buy 20 pieces, you are wasting your time. What you're better off to do is pay the market premium and go to a good 
good pre-owned dealer. Who do I recommend? David SW. David SW. David SW. That's correct, guys. I want to tell you this now. I 100% stand behind David SW. David SW, the greatest pre-owned dealer in the entire United States of America. That's right. The greatest pre-owned dealer for Rolex, for Patek Philippe, for Audemars Piguet, David SW. He even does things like FP Jean. David SW, David SW, David SW. That's right. If you want to buy a pre-owned Rolex, a Patek Philippe, Automaz Piguet, there's only one good source I would recommend. David SW, David SW, David SW. I'm Paul Pluter, the method actor who plays Archibald Chesterfield III, and I'm proud to recommend David SW. See you later. Thank you for watching this channel.